the artist's spotlight. And what that is, that is for new members and sometimes older members that have been here forever, like me, to tell you about themselves and their artwork so that we can get to know each other on a <coughs> bigger, whatever that's called. <laughs> so today I'm the artist spotlight. I'm Sharon Maneri. I was born in Ontario, Canada. I moved to the States as soon as I could because I hate the cold weather. My family, when there are a mul multitude of relatives, all live in Toronto or the, that area. Uh, I moved here with Pan American, <coughs> the original Pan American. Yes, I'm old. <laughs> and what a, I spoke French. You had to speak two languages. And Canada's half French, half English. Oh, please all turn off your phones. Thank you. Um, so that was a wonderful experience. She's taking care of that. Um, and I got to travel and all the great fun things. You need to sign in and get a raffle ticket at, at the back. The lady with the rose sweaters. The roses on her sweater. Um, so after leaving Pan Am, which was a fa my first flight, I had the whole cast of I Dream of Jeannie oh. in first class. <laughs> That's when the actors actually used airplanes. They didn't have their own. It was, and I was put in the galley. The galley means to cook the meals because we actually cooked the prime rib and we actually made the cherries jubilee. I hate cooking. <laughs> I was terrified. However, was it Dick Sargent was the guy? He loved cooking and he asked if he could cook. Oh, yay! <laughs> I met Merle Norman, I met Jonathan Winters, I met all sorts of celebrities. So that was a great job. When I left there, I was living in LA. Now I come from a very small town in Canada, very agricultural, small town, very British, very proper. I moved to LA where people wear bathing suits and skimpy clothes and never dress up. I was shocked, <clears throat> just shocked. If I was young and naive. Anyway, I moved to San Francisco after that and worked for IBM, first as a secretary, then as a, uh, there were two jobs that came available, either the executive secretary to the manager or to the computer section called systems analyst. I said, very simply being poor all my life, which one pays more? <laughs> I became a systems analyst. That was a very complex job that is now broken down into segments, i.e., a programmer or a forms designer or how to teach them. I did it all. <clears throat> so that was fun and I really enjoyed that. I had my own van. Oh, now I just came from the airlines. So, you know, IBM's very stiff. I showed up. It was a time of Twiggy and really bright colors. I showed up in a mini really bright color and purple suede shoes. Yeah, I like to change things around. Anyway, eventually I got my own van because I would help the salesman sell the product. And so I had my own van, my own machine and van. And so, and I got written up in the Chronicle and it was a big deal. So then I left there. Oh, I've had many careers and many jobs. Careers are different than jobs. So I changed now, I think what they do next. Oh, I sold furniture in Sausalito. I lived in Sausalito, so that was really convenient. That was fun. I love interior design, anything to do with the house. And then I went to work for S. Harris, which is 
a company that sells to the interior design trade. And it's fabric. I'm a fabricaholic. I love fabric, design, color. No wonder I wanted to be an artist. <clears throat> uh, then, oh, selling furniture. I guess I did that before I did the selling the furniture. Um, the guy, the furniture store was in an old building in Sausalito, and upstairs was a boutique real estate company. The guy who owned it came down and said, you've sold more furniture than any of my agents can use. Have you ever thought of being in real estate? Never. That's like a used car salesman. <laughs> I went into real estate. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it because you're always learning something new. You meet different people. You see houses. And that fit in with, I love everything about houses. So I did that for many, many years. And then my sister, I had a dream that my sister was going to be in a wheelchair. She was a single mom and she had two children. And I had a dream that I would have to take the children because she would die. <clears throat> so I called her up and I said, I'm thinking of moving. Should I come to Vancouver? She said, yes, yes, yes. So packed up my house, which the, this is getting too long. I have to cut this out. <laughs> The mover said, how many children do you have? I said, it's just me. He said, you have enough stuff for a family of four. <laughs> anyway, I moved to Vancouver, Canada. The next week, my sister was in bed. I ended up raising the two kids. After about a year, she asked me to move out. <laughs> We're both A personalities, maybe triple A, OK? But when I was there, I met Mark, and I, he wanted to move. He was my boyfriend, and he wanted to move somewhere warm because it rains all the time. And it's beautiful. I love Vancouver. As beautiful as it is, I couldn't live there because I need the sunlight. So we moved. Let's see. We got married, and then we moved to Las Vegas. The last place on earth I wanted to move to. Who wants to move to Las Vegas? Anyway, <coughs> we moved here. I hated it for the first three years. We got divorced. I loved it after that. <laughs> We're still very good friends. He's my best ex. Okay. And uh, then I was in real estate again. And when I retired, you know, it's really a shock. You know, you wait to retire, you wait to retire, and then you retire, and then it's like, well, who am I? Who am I? What do I want to do? How am I going to fill up the days? What am I going to talk to people about when I go to parties? Because I always talked about real estate. What else? And so a friend of mine said, well, why don't you open an art studio? You've always wanted to be an artist, which I had. And so that's what I did. I converted my master suite into an art studio and started teaching art. And Kathleen was one of the first people, as well as many others. The, sixth, the first year, I'm good at promoting. The sixth, first year, I had 66 new students. Skip forward 15 years later, I have seven. <laughs> They said, well, what degree do you have to teach art? Well, I don't have a degree. Well, what else do you have? I said, I'm with the Watercolor Society. I take lots of workshops. That's why I only had seven at the end. But I became a very excellent artist. And that was the most wonderful period of my life, because I finally made friends. It's difficult when you move to a new town. And real estate's a very lonely job. So Laura who, and Jeff, who are the hospitality, were also artists, and they take care of the food. Yay? Yay. Laura and Jeff. Who else was? Oh, Georgia. 
Georgia was in, in my art class. She was one of the seven at the end. And she's giving out free tickets. <laughs> so um, before Linda took this job on of workshop chairman, I told her it was an easy job. You get to take lots of classes. And I was gullible. And <laughs> she got back. She forced me to be president. <laughs> I got back at her. Yeah, she got it. She got back. So anyway, um, one of the people that I had the privilege of taking classes from was Shirley Jean. Now, she's moved to Florida. She was a very good friend of mine, and she was so both sides of her brain. But the analytical side, I learned so much. I probably learned more from her about watercolor than I did taking all the workshops. I mean, she got into, look at a tube of paint and look at the little numbers on it. Now, what do they mean? And you go over here and you figure it out. It was great. So that was, Really wonderful, and I really appreciate her for it, and I miss her. Um, so now I'm on a new journey, thanks to Linda. Now I don't have to wonder what I'm going to do in a, when I'm retired. And I have a lot to learn, and I need everybody's help, because it's a big job, and I need help, and I'm learning so much. I want to acknowledge Hiram. Can you stand up? Not really? Yeah, that Hiram. Okay, Hiram has just volunteered to be the membership chair, which was also one of the things I was doing. <coughs> so now he will be giving out the certificates for signature, as well as many other duties, which I really appreciate you taking the initiative. Boy. You've been a godsend to me. Thank you, Hiram. I'm just looking around to see if there's anybody that I'm supposed to remember to say something about. Forgive me if I've forgotten. OK, so I'm the Artist Spotlight. You've heard about me. You can see my artwork at the break. At the break. I've got some books of some of my artwork, and I've brought some actual examples. So at the break, you can take a look at those. 